Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm Carl and you're tuned back into the USG Knowledge Hub. And in today's video, we're looking at the relationship between power, voltage and current. And in other terms, the power triangle. Okay, so in today's video, I'm gonna show you a few tips, very much the same as if you've tuned in and watched our Ohm's Law Triangle video. Um, just how to use the values and how to adapt them in the triangle to help you do your calculations. Okay, so with the power triangle, you're going to be using it very much the same as the Ohm's Law Triangle, but the values inside are going to be slightly different, okay? So on the triangle, you are going to have at the top, you're going to have the letter P for power, okay? And then on the bottom, you're going to have the I which is for current, and in the bottom corner here, you're going to have the V for voltage, so PIV, okay? And basically, what you're going to do, very much the same as the Ohm's Law Triangle, when you're working out your calculations, as long as you've got two of the values, you should be able to get the third, okay? And once we've done this, we will show you the relationship between the Ohm's Law Triangle and the Power Triangle together, and how you can adapt to both to come to an end figure, okay? So, as we know, for uh, any, any form of electrical calculation, we use the nominal voltage of 230 volts. But for this example I'm going to show you first, we're going to look at the power, okay? So when we talk about power, we're talking about the power of some form of equipment, what it may use. So, for example, power is normally um, expressed in watts or kilowatts, okay? So, to show you that, so what we would have is one kilowatt, the number one wouldn't be able to be put straight into that triangle, okay? Because if you put that into there, you're not going to get anything in such of a value when you divide it by anything on the triangle. So what you need to do, first of all, is convert the one into watts. So one kilowatt is always equal to 1,000 watts okay and that is the value what you need to put in the top of the triangle so when we talk about power we're talking about the power consumption in watts okay so that thousand there would go in the top and that same applies to whatever uh, kilowatt rating that is or if you've got a piece of equipment that's given in watts it may just be that way um, it, it is put on the data badger etc so for example on this scenario we're going to look at a four point six kilowatt just say that's a oven or something like that okay so 4.6 kilowatts we need to convert that into watts okay so before we put that into there it needs to be in watts so 4.6 kilowatts into watts would be 4600 watts okay so that value now can be put in there and what we're trying to achieve here is we're trying to find out what the current for that circuit is okay so this is very helpful if you're an electrician if you're in electrical trade and you're trying to work out the maximum demand of something you can work out the appliance what it's going to draw for that circuit and apply these figures into the triangle and come out with a value okay so if we put our 4600 watts into the top there and we know our nominal voltage what we use for our calculation is going to be 230 volts the same applies as the ohm's law triangle so if you're wanting to find out the current which we are you must use the power figure, divide that by the voltage, and that will give you your current. The same applies if you add your current, but not your voltage. You could do your power divided by your current would give you your voltage, okay? And the same applies as well if you was looking for the power requirements for that equipment. All you need to do, as long as you add the current and the voltage, if you times those two together, that would give you your power value, okay? So for this example, we're gonna use a 4,600 watts, and we're going to divide that by 230 volts. That should give you in the region of 20 amps, okay? So our current there, so the eyes there symbolizing current, remember it's measured in amps, so that would give us 20 amps, 
Okay, so what we've done there is we've used our 4.6 kilowatt value given, maybe in the manufacturer's instructions. We've converted that into watts because you always need to convert kilowatts to watts to be able to put it in the power part of the triangle. We've then divided that by our voltage, 230 volts, which has given us our end figure of 20 amps, which fills in that point there. Okay, so we'll look now at a different combination and then we'll go on to how we're going to adapt that and use that alongside the Ohm's Law Triangle. Okay, so now we're going to look at a different combination. And for example, this may come in if you were to check a circuit, say with a clamp meter or something like that, and you was to measure the current going through that circuit and say, for example, you had current of 20 amps it was a 230 volt circuit, so the voltage was 230 volts, okay? We have those two values there, but we are wanting to know the power requirements for that appliance, say, that's attached to that circuit. So what we need to do now is see if we can put these two values into our triangle and see if that can give us the, the, the figure that we're looking for, basically. So... We're looking for power, so as usual, same with power and the Ohm's Law Triangle, the one that you're looking for is the one that you're going to cover up. So we're looking for power. So we need to check that we've got both the current and also the voltage, and we have. So we've got the 20 amps there, so we put the 20 in that one, and we put the 230 volts in that one, and as discussed before, we're going to times those together, okay? So if we times those together, so if we did 20 times the 230 volts, like so, that should give us in power form, okay, so if we did those together, that would give us 4,600, okay? That might look like a bit of an odd figure on your, on your calculator, but that figure there is shown in watts, okay? So 4,600 watts. If we needed to convert that into kilowatts, okay, remembering that 1,000 watts is equal to one kilowatt, we've got 4,600. So that would make it in kilowatts, 4.6 kilowatts. Okay, so that's basic, the, basically the same formula over again, and all you do is just making sure you've got the two values that you need, and you should be able to get the value um, from the triangle, obviously if you use those set ones there, so voltage, current, or power. The only difference is now, if for example, you was wanting to find out the resistance for that circuit, you have potentially three different values there, or two values, which we'll look at next, but we may need to incorporate the Ohm's Law Triangle to put the two together. So that's what we're going to look at next. Okay, so now we're going to look at the relationship that we can have between the Power Triangle and the Ohm's Law Triangle. And as you can see on the board, We've got both triangles there. We've got PIV for the power triangle and we've got VIR, okay, for the Ohm's Law Triangle. And those represent power, current and voltage, voltage, current and resistance. So in this section here, we're going to show you how you may need to use a combination of both to determine the value that you need, okay? So for example, if we had a 4.6 kilowatt cooker on a 230 volt supply we would first need to work out um, the current for that to be able to work out the resistance and so on okay so basically we have those two values but them two values can only fit in that triangle because that triangle there doesn't have the resistance okay so it's the resistance is the figure that we're trying to find out. So if we've only got those two values, the 4.6 kilowatts, so if that was in watts, that'd be 4,600 watts, okay? Unfortunately, we can't put that into the Ohm's Law Triangle because all we have in that one is the voltage, the current, and the resistance. Whereas the power triangle, we can put the power figure in, which is a 4,600 watts, and we've got the voltage. The voltage is in both, but obviously because we've only got the power figure there that can go into that one, we need to use the power triangle first. So if we apply the 4,600 watts to there, 
with a 230 volts, divide those two together, okay? So basically we do 4,600 divided by 230 volts. That should give us then 20 amps, okay? So now we've ended up with three different figures now, okay? So we've got 4,600 watts, we've got 230 volts, and we've got 20 amps. So we need to look at those three figures and find out which ones now will work in that triangle. So the second triangle being the Ohm's Law triangle. So can we put the power in there? Well, that's voltage, current resistance. So we know straight away we cannot put the power figure in. Can we put the voltage in there, 230 volts? We can. So the voltage will go in there now. And then we're trying to find the resistance. So we'll cover that one up, which means we're left with the current. And we've got the current there, which is measured in amps, which is 20 amps. So we can put that value in the triangle, cover that up. So in effect, what we're going to do now is do 230 volts divided by the 20 amps, and that should give us then a resistance measurement of 11.5 ohms, okay? So just to show you that in a bit better detail, let's rub these out. So basically we're going to do 230 volts, Divide that by your 20 amps. Remember, these are the two values that you've been given from your power triangle. You've just applied them now to your Ohm's Law triangle. And then that should give you there 11.5 ohms. And basically, that's using both a combination of the power triangle and the Ohm's Law triangle together to be able to work out the measurements you need for your task. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe and if you want to check out our Knowledge Hub playlist for more exciting content to help you along your journey. Take care. Bye.